Hi, I'm Dave Zarin, and here's what you need to know about the Prince George's County Public Schools, where great things are happening. You know, you can spell success a lot of different ways. Here in the school system, we're spelling it P-A-R-C-C, -C, about the college and career readiness assessments, and S-T-E-M, science, technology, engineering, and math. But for an eighth grader at Kenmore Middle School, Ayub Abdul Rizak, he knew just the right letters to win the County Spelling Bee Championship. He won it with two words, one of which was a kind of curve and another a type of vegetable that kids hate to eat. Let's watch. Parabola. P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stay there. Stay there. For the championship, this is your word. Cruciferous. Cruciferous. C R U C I F E R O U S. And you are the champion. <laughs> Beating out 21 other spellers from private and parochial schools at the University of Maryland's Clarice Smith Center, Ayub won a trophy almost as big as he is and a spot in the Scripps National Spelling Bee at the Gaylord Hotel on Memorial Day weekend. We wish you have plenty of luck and lots of perseverance. And speaking of words, there really are none to express the total joy experienced by 20 Laurel High School students who recently visited the White House. Uh, today, Michelle hosted a workshop for a group of area high school students with some of the cast members. Uh, I understand these young men, uh, people put on some pretty terrific performances of their own. <laughs> Look at this brother, he's all like, thank you, thank you. That was the leader of the free world talking to one Tyreek McLennan of Laurel High School who'd been one of the lucky students to witness a performance of the smash Broadway musical Hamilton at the White House, and then, with his classmates, stage a similar skit for the cast and First Lady. Woo. For Tyreek, it was a moment he'll never forget. He was saying that, yes, that young man right there has a lot of confidence in himself, and that's a good thing to do because he teaches his daughters the same thing, to, is to have the inner confidence. So. That, that to me was, you know, really inspirational to, that Obama could say that I have confidence. And do you, Tyreek, do you have confidence? Was he right? Yeah. Tyreek is not alone up there on cloud nine. For the 12 Laurel students, along with others from two Virginia high schools, the chance to learn American history, specifically the story of Alexander Hamilton, from a cast of amazing rappers in the president's house, still seems a bit unreal. And I have to give a special shout out to the students that we have here. Yeah. We have students from Laurel High School. Yeah. I know. It's you. Are you still bubbling? Yeah, I still am. Like every time I talk to, about it, like I have sometimes my grand, my grandparents will ask me about it, or just some people like who know ask me about it. I'm and the all the awe and everything comes back to me, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this happened, this happened, this happened, and it's it's still with me. I think it'll be with me till like next year. Well, here you are, a high school junior, and you've made it to the White House already, you know? Did you peak too early? <laughs> Just a little bit. It's huge, because even my parents haven't been to the ho White House. They haven't met the president. So knowing that I met the First Lady, I touched the First Lady, I touched it. It's just like I never want to wash my hands again. And if the Laurel students made a splash on Pennsylvania Avenue, and they did, our students with intellectual disabilities made one equally large at the Special Olympics swim meet at the Sports and Learning Center in Landover recently. Let's have a look.
Are you going to win? Yeah. Like most all the other Special Olympians splashing through the pool at Landover's Sports and Learning Center recently, Brandon Roberts was brimming with confidence and pure joy. For after months of training and with the support of parents and special educators, Brandon and 30 other students and former students were more than ready to show that intellectual disabilities can't stop kids who have determination and true grit. In second place, Robert Wright. What does this mean to you and to him to be here today? It is a way of showing that he's able to do, I, I don't say kids are disabled, I say they're differently able because everyone is able to do something. I'm so proud of him because it's just another milestone that he's able to do to show that he's able to do whatever he puts his mind to. And in first place, Brandon Roberts. <laughs> Brandon, how you feeling? Good. Yeah? Did you know you were going to win? Yeah. <laughs> Great performances there. And you know, yet more medals and kudos went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School's men's basketball team recently because they took home the state basketball championship, defeating the defending champ, Anne Arundel County's Mead High School. Here's Grant Kittleson with more on Roosevelt's triumph. The Eleanor Roosevelt High School boys basketball team made the difficult look easy as the Raiders cruised to the 4A Maryland State Championship by a score of 72 to 39 over the Mead Mustangs. This is the second title in four seasons for head coach Brendan O'Connell's team and came at the expense of the defending champions. The Raiders used their defense to put this one away early, allowing only six points in the first half. Roosevelt finishes the season with a 24-3 record, and most importantly, that state championship trophy. Thanks for watching today on Great Things Are Happening. We're going to leave you with a feature we call Perspective, where we look back at great things that have happened in our school system. Today, we'll take you back to when the then brand new Rosa Parks Elementary opened its doors. The year was 2006. And like with Hamilton, Rosa Parks' story was a sobering lesson in American history. If Rosa Parks, sitting on that famous bus, could see the school that bears her name today, she would no doubt agree that it is sitting pretty. Spread over eight acres, and occupying the site of the former Agar Road School and Office, the $17 million buff-colored building sparkles in the morning light. With over 31 classrooms, a media center to rival any in the county, and hallways that intentionally use the colors of the Maryland state flag, Rosa Parks the school still manages to feel like home to 760 children who enter every day, which is all just what the architects had hoped for. We try to select colors that are classic in nature, bright enough uh, to be exciting and yet be a backdrop for all the great artwork that the kids produce. Uh, Dick and I are parents of small children ourselves. We have tons of their artwork in our home. We enjoy it. We see that as, as a great way for the kids to express themselves, particularly with the name of the school as Rosa Parks. There's obviously an educational opportunity here, which we think is terrific. We've, we've tried to make the, uh, uh, the media center the real focal point of the building. It's the center of the building both geographically and from a focus standpoint. And so of course it, it offers that opportunity to uh, stress to the children the importance of reading and the other media uh, uh, that, that, is avail that are available to, to them at this time. It's a lot of fun to come and watch the small kids walk down the hallways. They stand in line and follow the patterns along the corridor. And, and you can see that they're enjoying themselves. And that, that's very rewarding. It's a type of architecture that we specifically focus on because we do enjoy the results. And it's something that we can take pride in and enjoy for the next 30, 40 years. For those ensuing decades, the students at Rosa Parks will continue to admire the exploits of a woman whose courage is timeless. From that date, December 1st, 1955, when a black woman, disgusted with being forced to ride in the back of a bus, took a stand and refused to move from a whites-only section, the Civil Rights Movement was born. I only knew that 
As I was being arrested, that it was the very last time that I would ever ride. Rosa Parks' arrest, the Montgomery, Alabama bus boycott that followed, and the eventual ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court that discrimination based on race was against America's Constitution represents a triumphal story that the mighty have lauded and that even the youngest of Rosa Parks students understands implicitly and can retell in any language. I said thank you for myself and for every colored girl, every colored boy who didn't have heroes who were celebrated. I thanked her then. The life back then was really unfair. The white people were selfish and didn't want to share. Rosa Parks tried her best to end these rules so black people could have rights and go to school. When she got out of jail, she, she still did a lot, like marching, shouting, and doing boycotts. Now this special woman has left her marks, so I want you to remember Rosa L. Parks. What else changed, Duan? Was it just riding on buses? What else seemed to change? We can, we can come to schools with black, black and white people. We can drink at the same water fountain. We can go to restaurants together. A lesson in history we will never forget, as those students showed us so very well there. Thanks again for joining us on Great Things Are Happening here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. We'll see you next time.